feel like I missed something. I always feel that way though, don't I? What's up? How you guys doing? Why does it look dark? It's because we have dark vehicles now. Whenever, see, then you have to like, vehicles really matter. So then if we bump that to that, maybe four. No, it's too wash. Too wash, okay, bring it back, bring it back. There we go, 4.5. There we go. What's up, how you guys doing? We got a brand spanking new uh, GMC Sierra. We are going to be doing some shades, I'm not sure yet, 35 on the shield. Uh, 15 carbon on the front doors, and then on the rear, we're gonna try to match the back as close to those front doors as we can. 20 on the rear already. So we're either just gonna do 70, or we're gonna do 50. Basically whatever looks, looks best. We'll use a meter, we'll play around with some options, and we'll see what looks good. Manny, Supreme, Fire, just tried Pro Nano Ceramic and I love it. Me too, man. See? <laughs> Glad to hear it. That's, that's one reason I use it. It shrinks super fast and easy. Isn't it kind of unreal how fast it shrinks? And for it's a, it's a two mil ceramic too. It's actually a little bit thicker. What's on the windshield? Uh, we're gonna do 35. 35 Pro Nano. So we got a little bit of a project today. And we're gonna drop stuff already. Everything should be all set up and charged though. So that's the good news. Is there bad news? No, I don't think so. So let me get this, this dealie all set up. And then we'll get started. I've used a two mil film before. I couldn't get it to shrink for the life of me, but this Geo is amazing. I know. Um, so I did a video. When I first looked at that film, um, my original idea for a video was to show how shrinking carbon and ceramic takes longer, um, how to do it, and you know, it, it's not necessarily harder. It just takes longer, so you got to take your time. At the time, I think maybe, God, I forgot what the entire, I'd have to go back and see exactly how long it took me. But then I got my hands on this stuff and threw it on the windshield, did a side-by-side -side comparison, and I was like, I think this shit just shrunk faster than the dyed film that I already used. You working on a Saturday? Yeah, that's money days. Saturdays are like the busy days. That's when other people have off. I at least take Sunday off. <laughs> I thought it was gonna take, thought it was gonna take longer, uh, but probably the fastest I ever shrunk. Pretty crazy. Stay hydrated. Oh, that's a good reminder. I drink too much coffee while I'm working and it's warmer. There you go. But yeah, we're gonna be using it on the windshield. Um, that's one reason, I mean, that's one of the reasons why everything that I, I shrink and install seems to go smoothly. I just, the films that I use aren't, aren't difficult to work with. Just a little stickier. <laughs> we are live in this corner. Tint master extraordinaire. Matt Blackmer. With one T. Uh, have you ever considered switching your hours to evenings to have more customers? Yeah, I actually think it would do much better. Um, 
uh, uh, both for some clients and uh, and for viewership on the stream. But the thing is, uh, I have a family, so it doesn't work that way. <laughs> I mean, I'm lucky right now to start as late as I do. I start at 10. I'm not a morning person. Um, it's been suggested I start at maybe 9 or 8. <laughs> I just, I hate waking up. So 10 it is. So this is good, right? Perfect. Business has been slow out here in Chicago. How's business there? Um, I'm starting to see some slowdowns. Um, it always seems like I go a few days without booking much, and then all of a sudden a day will come in, and it'll fill out my schedule for a while. But that buffer, it's like, you know, it's, it's getting closer and closer. Um, much better this year than it was last year. And honestly, that's, that's the way I've always seen it. Um, any tint shop will go through busy, busy time and slow time, um, and you can't ever plan those weeks out. It's just some weeks get really busy, some weeks get really slow. Um, I haven't had this place going for more than a couple years now at this point. So any business that I'm typically picking up over last year is, is going to be improved. So down 20% this year. Damn, that's pretty significant. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, that's no good. Um, I mean, it's uh, inflation. Everybody's, everybody's going through a hit, so... If you've been in business for a long time, I'm by no means an absolute authority on this. I mean, it doesn't completely surprise me. But I haven't been in business. I, th I think that's the difference that you're going to see between some. I haven't been. This thing's awesome, by the way. I haven't been in business here that long, so I have more of an upward trajectory right now. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, this thing, this thing's super cool. This is the 22 model. Um, they changed the screens. The when I was pulling it in, the 360 camera was super cool. Everything about this truck, I really like the updates on this. There we go. Oh, they put a little starter strip in there. My squeegee was supposed to be here yesterday, but it hasn't showed up. What squeegee? I'm trying to find a job that'll teach me, but it's dry here. You're trying to find a, like a tinting job? Does that chime go through the speakers? Yeah, a lot of them do. classes for August yet. Um, I should have dates today then. I I just forgot to post it. I don't have like an official thing planned, but I can pick dates today. It's kind of, that part's kind of up to me. I just didn't set anything in advance for it. July was a little bit slower too to pick up. I still have one spot left for the July class. Um, and then we're, uh, we're focusing on getting everything together for moving and whatnot. So I've just been distracted from even setting dates for the next class. But there will definitely be a class. I don't see any, any problems with setting one up. This class is kind of going to be a little bit interesting because... 
we close uh, actually this week on Wednesday. And then, so we have till the end of the month to move. And that's a little bit later than what we had thought. So I would have planned a class for near the beginning of July rather than later in July. So we had some time, but now, uh, now we're gonna be running classes at the same time we're trying to finish up the move. Woo! It's gonna be a busy, busy month. Boom, boom! Here. Shh. Oh, wait, did I lock it? It actually might be locked right now. Oh, not far away. Just a new house. We've been renting. And now we finally bought a house. Tell Jack to move for you. <laughs> Surprise! Uh, I think I'm gonna need him to help out a little bit. Let me make sure. Yes, that one is locked. There, now it's unlocked. Congratulations, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I should leave these pegs up. I keep pushing them down and then wanting to tape over it. Ever found a solution to your hose and cord issue? Yes and no. Um, the problem wasn't really finding reels for them or if I do, where to put them. And I'm still, Still not completely sure on that one, but what I ended up doing um, was getting a couple of carts, one on each side, and I've got everything I need on both of the carts. So this should be real simple as long as I can keep stuff separated. It needs to go where it's supposed to go. Hello, Tin Studio, how can I help you? Good, how are you? Uh, for Impala, did you want to do a full windshield? Did you want to do the front windshield as well? Okay, so everything with the windshield would start at 450. 450. Uh-huh. No problem, you have a good one. Oh, he sounded so defeated. I was gonna, I gotta bring up my calendar so I know what my, my schedule is. I'm pretty sure I got some openings early next week, but later is kind of booked up. This week filled out nice. I ran into it the same uh, same problem last week. If anything, I'll make a video day out of it. So I'll have to plan for Monday then to be a video day, it looks like. Which is good because, you know, <laughs> videos don't get posted. The more work I have, the less videos get posted on the channel. So then when I have a clear day, um, I take advantage of it and film a video, and then I get a video to edit for a di another day or so. Cool. All right, let's get this rolled up. So, not really a change on these, or these aren't laminated. I mean, actually, yeah, these look very tapered. 
I bet they are, sorry, from the previous model. Did you wirelessly connect the two displays? Oh, on one side to the other? No, I actually have a uh, 50 foot uh, HDMI cable running from the computer off of a splitter. So that way I can just jump to this station or this station and do whatever I need to do. So like this guy right here. I really need to put one back here, a couple of extra monitors or something so I can at least read when I'm farther away, but I haven't done that yet. I could either put like a tablet and then keep going into the live stream or I could have a monitor that just syncs up with everything, but again, it's another thing I gotta set up. It's like a dealer sticker. Just before I forget, I'm gonna take that off. Good. Good. But yeah, we got more tape, more carpet shield, more everything. So I should be all set, especially for the class too. So that'll be nice. And we need carbon. So we're doing 15. I know I've got a short roll of 15. I wonder if that's an inventory, though. Actually, I actually have a couple rolls. We gotta hunt down. We gotta hunt down my carbon 15. It's probably in the back right now. Twenty-two Sierra refresh is better than twenty-one. Oh, for sure, it's a big difference. Carbon fifty. Yeah, we just he just arranged all of this. There's I know I got a roll of fifteen somewhere. Carbon, because these are twenty-fours and thirty-sixes. Five fifty fifty thirty-five. These are all pro classic. And it's all ceramic. I mean, if I have to, I'll grab the big roll. I just don't think I need to. It's around here somewhere. I just gotta hunt it down. Maybe it's this roll. No, that's 20. That's five. Ugh. Oh, duh. It's probably one of these ones here. Aha! There they are. Do you use the tint was inventory system? No, not for automotive. Although it's probably something that I should do. I just haven't. You know, I, since I'm the one using all the films, um, I kind of, like, for the longest time, inventory for me was no, no big deal. I never need to, needed to do anything extra for inventory. But now what happens is, like, Instead of putting things back in my truck, everything gets set kind of everywhere. So then what used to be pretty simple um, now <laughs> has become a little bit more of a headache. So it would be helpful to use it. Okay, so this is carbon 15. We are going to do this on the front too, and then we're gonna see what kind of matches this on the back. So your title says ceramic, I know. So we're doing ceramic on the rest of it. We're doing carbon 15 on the front because I don't have 15 in a ceramic. He just wanted a little bit darker than 20% on the front. So that is what we're gonna do. I 
Yeah, Pro Nano, I've got 70, 50, uh, 35, 20, and 5. It would be nice if they had a couple more shades there, especially since they do for the carbon. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Glad to hear it. Your website made ordering film really easy. Do you sh yeah, they, and they're awesome on shipping. Thanks, man. Glad to hear it went nice. Yeah, I've been very impressed with how fast they are. They just, they move quick. I just had a call with them yesterday too. They're very focused on shipping times and customer service. Doesn't matter how big or small the order is. They gotcha. Ooh, let me get another blade here. If you get used to weighing it, it's nice to be able to see the inventory on your phone. Yeah, I should, uh, I should definitely take advantage of it. I'm carrying over habits from, uh, from mobile. So I used to be able to see everything really easily because it's like, oh, well, you know, I only have so much room in my Explorer. And then whenever I run run low on something or open up the second roll, that's when I order order whatnot. Here, like I'll set a box here and then I'll forget I've got an extra one over there or I'll think I have an extra one over there. It's just inventory is actually getting a little out of hand. Because it was also mainly uh, Pro Classic or, or Avery NR too. It wasn't really like three lines of film to uh, worry about. Now it's a lot more carbon and ceramic to keep track of. And it's just kind of funny. I didn't think it'd be a problem. And then I have to hunt stuff down. So since we've uh, been focusing on cleaning up the rest of the, of the shop, Oh, no, I'll explain that in a second. So, yeah, um, figuring out, like, I, I'm going to re-clean up this. Uh, so this is the carbon. This is Pro Classic. That's ceramic. And then extra rolls are all in inventory back there. So I'm going to go through and, uh, and clean stuff out. Oh, yeah, yeah. So as far as putting a roll down, yeah, you can set these basically anywhere. I always tighten them up, let them drop and you're not gonna ruin the edges or anything. I used to put them all the time down on like um, concrete floors and stuff like that. It's really not, not a big deal. Um, more often than not, like, I mean, especially with this floor, I've got, um, it's a little better than a concrete floor, but also I tend to then set them back in the box too if I was like out on mobile. But yeah, just setting them down, it's not gonna hurt it. I always tighten up, the, tighten up the roll a little bit. They're super slick. I guess it depends on the film. Um, the Pro Classic and the Pro Nano um, have a little static to them. The C2 is a little bit slicker. Are you able to read chat while working? I'm psychic. Which then you might be wondering, hey, why are you in window tinting then? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why, I just am.
Cha-ching. All right, so we got 15. And we're gonna throw a meter once we find it. That's the, probably the last missing piece. Put a meter over it and close the doors too and we'll look through and we'll see what comes closer. That doesn't make sense. Why did I do that? Because I need to shift it down and put it over the... There we go. Found it. Hey! Oh, that's awesome. Ken Glass Ken, super Jack. chatted nine dollars and ninety nine cents. So we're gonna put this Congratulations actually on over the glass. Your hard worker deserved window tinting paid mine off last year. Ken Glass, thank you so much for the ten. I appreciate that. Thank you. And congrats on getting yours all all paid off. Yep, we're just starting the fun in probably one of the worst times to buy a house. <laughs> But here we are. Uh, can it come on? Just sneak over it. There we go. Ten. All right, so we're ten on the fronts now. Because 15 with the film, it's going to drop it down to ten on this one. So then we're going to meter the back, and we're going to cut a couple of samples and see what's going to come closest. I'm guessing it probably is smarter to put, ooh, 22, what the heck? That's lighter, usually they're a little darker. We're probably gonna put 50 on it then. That's what I'm gonna grab first. Brandon Mills super chatted $9.99. Housewarming gift. Brandon? Brandon with the 10, housewarming gift, thank you. Both from Ken and Brandon, thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, we, uh, like I haven't really, this has been ongoing since like November. Um, I haven't really talked much about it because I feel, I felt like for the longest time at any, any moment, something's going to happen and you know, there's going to be a problem or something. 12, that is going to be what we're going for. 35 is going to drop it too low, 50% over the back. I mean, we're within literally like a 2% range, depending on how this meter wants to settle in there. Yep. That's what we're going for. Plus I got the liner on it too. I don't think that's gonna hardly change it, but. Yep, we'll do 50 on the back. Um, 20, or 15 on the front, excuse me. 15 on the front, uh, 50 on the back over the factory, and then 35 in the front. So that's just what we're gonna do. All right, let's roll this back up. It's kind of crazy too, because like, so looking back through, uh, through like family videos and stuff, I think my dad was in his, uh, in like his early to mid twenties when they first bought a house. And now it's like, like I, I, I don't necessarily feel older. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the weird things about getting older. Is there's never been a single day where I've woken up and I'm like, oh, I feel like an adult now. But I'm 34. And uh, just how crazy things have gotten. 
Ooh, I do. Look at that. No, I don't. Just kidding. This one's empty. <laughs> Why is this here? I think this probably has like a sliver of film left on it. I was like, really? Wow. Yeah. Don't even bother. This should be in the garbo. <sighs> trying to remember if I've got a 50%. I think I do. Um, but I typically don't order short rolls of the light films because I never use them. So either this one right here is my 50 or 35. I think it's a 50. I think I had to use this on an F250. Yeah, that's gonna be, that's gonna be 50 right there. When's your birthday? Uh, it's June. Oh, this is 35. Okay, well, I'm gonna write that on the box. This is the ceramic 50 or 35, excuse me. Pro Nano 35. Oh yeah, I got a, I got an earpiece. Damn, thinking. I'm just trying to remember. I'll double check, see if I have a light roll of Pro Nano, that I don't have to use a bigger one, but. I don't think so. 36, 40, and the rest of it's 35. Yep, 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 yep. All right, long roll it is. This is very inefficient. But that's why I gotta order smarter next time. These are kind of long. So, I don't know, are these still tall? Are these still taller than, that's fine. Does this, the 50 have a hint of blue? Yeah, the 50 does. Four. Thank you. I kind of figured. No fun. No fun on this one. We'll do sideways though. Or 36 sideways. How about a 40 sideways? <laughs> Let's waste some inches. Okay, it's well worth it. cut the bottom too, it just bevels up a little bit. So I'm gonna shift it over, I'm gonna line it up. Tack it and then I'll cut this side and then the bottom. Or I should have started and cut that side first before I cut that one. It used to be nice when you could tin a whole truck with a 20 inch roll. I know, right? So many, it was 20. The rams are still around. <laughs> Get away with that. Here we go. So when I shift it back, it's gonna slide it a little farther into that, that little notch there. But I'm gonna pull it down a long ways anyways. At least you don't have to shrink them. Oh, I still shrink them. 
because I want to. Just a little bit for me. There we go. Better. Neat. Let's go drop this down. Cool. Four mils thick. One of the main reasons we switched from Solar Guard is they only had 20 or 40s. Wait, what? Are you kidding me? They don't do 24s or 36? Solar Guard? That is the first time I've ever heard that. Not an HP smoke series. Um, that's goofy. If you're gonna carry a lineup of the film, carry it in a few different sizes. It's purely for an inventory thing. It's to make their life easier, not yours. That's silly. You know, I don't often hear stuff like that. So sometimes you hear so much about a company and you start to think the grass is greener over at that film company and then you hear something like that. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> Weird. There's always stuff, There's always stuff. What made you feel set with Geo? So I was looking to find a good upgrade path inside of, uh, inside of a film company. So this was sideways, so we also have to shrink this sideways. A little bit, not a lot. Somebody pointed out we don't have to shrink it, so, but I do, because I'm weird. But for me, uh, it was, I know, I know where some of the main lines are made and heard a lot of good things. And we had gone through, God, where are they coming from? Oh, it's this again? What happened? We got flies now? Ew. There's like three of them. It's all the lights. I don't want to escape anymore. I just want to come in here because it's nice and bright. But anyways, so I had been using Avery NR, and that was after using, God, what were we using? I didn't really use this by choice, but so I was with a mobile company. We were doing um, ASWF, and we were having a lot of problems. And then this one's gonna be at the bottom. So I had used Geo's Dark Matter like years and years ago. 
and I've seen enough enough films um, where carbon was like it's that sweet spot. A lot of companies had decent ceramic films that were a lot more expensive. And carbon is like is like that sweet spot for your good, better, best. You have a good dyed film, a good carbon film, and a good ceramic film. So I was looking to find a company that kind of filled that middle spot. And so when I was when I was looking to start uh, the tint studio. That was going to be a big emphasis. I had really only been installing one main line of film um, for a lot of the shops that we were tinting for because they didn't they didn't focus on selling different quality tints. They so they focused on just selling more tint jobs. They'd sell them at I don't know anywhere from like two fifty to three hundred bucks on average, and they wouldn't really talk about carbon or or ceramic or anything. So, um, oh yeah, it's right here. So what really did it for me was the C2. They came out with the C2 and I gave it a shot and that filled that gap there. So I'd already played around with Pro Nano. I really liked it. Um, Pro Classic was already a, a really proven film. I knew I could trust it. And it was just filling that middle gap there. So once they did that, it's like, well, you know, between, um, you know, I like the company. They seem to support everybody that wants to order through them, which you can't say that about <laughs> quite a few companies for, for smaller shops and people that are looking to get started and everything. Um, and they have films that will go toe to toe with any one of them. Because when you really get into film construction and stuff, then, then like all the f branding fluff kind of fades away. And you start to realize like, oh, well, there's films that only come from a handful of manufacturers. So there's gonna be a lot of similarities between many, many film brands out there. And so most of it is just branding. None more obvious than, uh, honestly, X spells, <laughs> which, like, it's a huge. It's it's one of the most important things about a business, aside from having a good product. So when you have a good product and solid branding, I mean, it's a no-brainer. But I know there's so many people on this channel that if that's what I was using then you, I'm sorry, you're kind of out of luck. And that is just having, like, I, I don't really like that. Exclusivity can be nice. Um, but this is more about teaching and uh, showing the ins and outs of, of the tint business and kind of growing along with you guys too. So if I got to constantly say, oh, just use this other brand of film that's similar enough, like, that, no, it's just, no, it's annoying. So that limited my selection a little bit, actually a fair amount. But I, like I said, when you peel away all the manufacturing stuff, It's just the only thing that I would gain through another company would just be potentially better branding collabs and stuff. I don't know. Not a better film, though. So when you're making your own tint business, the film brand doesn't really matter. It's just, do you have a good product 
that you can trust. And are they a good enough company that when you order film, you get it? <laughs> if there's a problem, how are they going to handle it? So they tick all those boxes, which has been really, really nice. They've had a couple problems, though. I mean, they haven't been all sunshine and rainbows, but no company that I've worked with has been perfect. So, like, I'm still waiting on um, Apex, honestly. So out of, sad, out of all the lines, they're pulled the 50%. I have a 50% Apex on my windshield right now that looks good. Um, the first time that I put it on, um, there was like a, like a texture to the film. And then this last time that I put it on, it looks good, but it started to curl away. There's something specific up with uh, Apex 50 right now, and they're they're doing a whole new run of it. They already have a couple different lots, but they got to figure out what the real issue is. It's got the same construction, or sorry, not the same construction, but like a lot of the same materials that the C2 has. It's just a ceramic film now instead of just a pure carbon film. So. As far as adhesive goes, I've never had an issue with C2. But there seems to be just something with the way 50% is right now on Apex. So I don't know. It's windshield, so it's not door windows. It's windshields. It's like the initial tack starts to curl back with too much soap. So they're, but they want it to be consistent. So. We're trying to figure out what's going on with it. So, I mean, like I've said from the beginning, I like to test all the products that I install, and they have a couple of offerings now. I'm still using, I'm still using C2, Pro Classic, and Pro Nano. I have no reason to really change other than add uh, higher ceramic. Five seconds. Hey, it still does it. They changed the switch. The switch is like massive now. Still does that little five second trick though. Kind of figured it would. But yeah. Wouldn't matter what company I'm with, there'd be problems from everybody one way or another. It's just, what are they? Do you know if film has a shelf life? Um, I wouldn't know what it is if there is one. As long as it looks okay, then you're probably fine. I would definitely run like a small scale test though. But I mean, if something's sitting on the shelf for a couple years, I wouldn't worry about it. You're talking about like, oh, I found this roll in the back that's 10 years old. <laughs>
Soap questions. What do you use? What mixture? Baby shampoo versus Dawn. So uh, slip solutions are personal preference. That's the only difference between any of them. So if you're using Dawn, then it's going to be a little bit more tacky. If you're using baby shampoo, um, it tends to slide a little bit more. With these films, I've found you have to be pretty soap heavy. Now there's limits to that. But I'm putting about three and a half ounces of soap inside of a three gallon keg. That keg gets full with about like two and a half to like two and three quarters gallons of water. Ooh, maybe I can put this on the back one. Let's do that. Here we go. <laughs> this is the one I cut out for my headband. Uh, funny how I always come across that towel. So, yeah, like I said, soaps are personal preference. Um, just play around with it, see how you like it, change it up a little bit. But is there a point in switching from one to the other if what you're using is working well for you? No, there's there's... No reason. The only things that you're gonna find with uh, with like the industry soaps, um, like a tint slime or a uh, fusion all type, it's like tint slime tends to dry faster because of some things that they put in it. It'll dry out faster. It'll dry clearer, um, and like. Not your film will dry clearer. It's like the solution itself seems to dry clearer. So it was, for me, it was easier to clean up. But it is a little bit too tacky for the films that I'm using. And then, oh yeah, it's over here. Having problems with it dry tacking, just not using enough baby shampoo? Yeah, add a little bit more. Ooh, let me do this. Let me see if this, will this fit? Will this fit? Oh yeah, that's one reason we got it. So this is Pro Nano 50, we can put this back in a box. We'll cut out the slider in a little bit now. So if you're using Geo, I, I say this all, like pretty often the Pro Nano and the Pro Classic, those both have pretty aggressive adhesives. Um, I've had to use baby shampoo with a little bit of Dawn rather than just adding more and more baby shampoo. Like there wasn't enough baby shampoo that I could add that stopped it from just freeze tacking all the time. It wasn't until I added a little bit of Dawn alongside the baby shampoo and then it helped freed it up so if you're having tacking issues like that where it's just like dude i'm putting soap in i'm putting more soap in and this stuff is just not sliding around part of it's going to be this time of year the glass can get warm and so things will tack a little faster um, but also just mixing up your soap a little bit that way will help it slide better like all the students that come here um, for the class I show them that right away. And honestly, for as many times as I say it, some of them will go like, oh, I didn't catch that. Damn, this works better now. <laughs> but part of it is you're not even sure what to look for. So I'll try to explain it a little bit better on this, on this window. God, these top edges, they're so nice. They're nice and new. I'm hardly getting any dirt off of it. So 
So this is the first time that I've used Tyvek. I bought four rolls. I'm assuming it's going to be fine. But it's the first time I've used Tyvek house wrap. Lowe's tape. You're probably not going to really see it much anymore. The main reason I got it was it was usually like 10 bucks a roll versus 14 And I buy a lot of them. So if the staple brands are 14 now and the budget one went up in price, I'm going to buy probably the staple brand one. Probably just going to go back to getting tuck tape. <laughs> I don't need it to... That's why I suggested a few weeks ago, Tyvek. Yeah, I didn't know that. Like, so I stocked up. I had, like maybe 10, 10 rolls that I bought um, when we got the classes going. So I've, I've, they're just hanging around still. I got through like the last of the rolls and then went to go buy more and I was like, oh shit, it's $14 now. Uh-oh. <laughs> there goes the budget option. Because <laughs> we don't need them. We don't need them to work as intended. We need them to cling for a little bit of time, and then we need them to peel clean. That's what they're supposed to do. Where's Jack? Oh, it's Saturday. He has to, like, take Saturdays off or whatever. <laughs> yeah, he works Monday, Monday through Friday. And even that's a little flexible, too. So like, we, I had some stuff on Wednesday and I was like, well you can come in and put the carts together if you want, fulfill some orders, do this and that, and he ended up taking it off. All right, no worries. So he, uh, he does jujitsu after like about six o'clock every day, and then he ended up doing a, a competition um, over the weekend. Unfortunately, he got his butt kicked. <laughs> but he's he's asking about uh, he's he's starting a YouTube channel too. I don't think he's got a video yet, though. He, like, made one, but he left it unlist unlisted. So he's working on it. Man, I'm glad I shrank this a little bit. This is like the RAM back windows. They're just big. And even though they're relatively flat, sometimes they still get fingers popping up on them. Can you do a windshield strip before installing a windshield? I'd do it the other way. I'd do the win full windshield and then do the strip because the film's going to overlap the strip and you're going to see a white line. It just looks cleaner if you do it with the full windshield first, then put a strip on top of it. but absolutely. If somebody's got a windshield strip and they want to tin a full window, um, if they want to save some money, they'll just leave the strip in place and then I'll tin over it. It's not the, not the prettiest look, but it's, they're the only ones that are really gonna notice, so it's up to them. Get good interest rate for getting a house at 5.7. We managed to lock in at 499, um, which is still a good rate. I'm really still upset about it though, because when we were looking at in November, rates were still in the threes. And then during um, our home build process, it's, uh, they went up. So you don't actually lock in a rate 
um, until a little later, but you're kind of guesstimating. So like they have a, a good estimate for like your closing date. And if you don't time it right within like a month, like so if you do like a 90 day ray lock, if you go past that, you have to pay fees that are like almost equal to like 1% of the home build every week or something. Like it's kind of crazy. So unfortunately, it, things started to go up really fast and we got at 499. But they could have been worse. They're like, we've heard other people that are the same, five and a half. And then rates, I think, are more than that right now, too. Pretty crazy. Whoa. Oh, that's a clay bar in there. We're going to put that back. You had your home built? Yes. Yeah, it was kind of a, a shock to me, too. They're like new car dealership. They're like new car dealerships. So I'll talk about that a little bit. I'll be refinancing once the rates go down. Yeah, same. Refinance 3.6 just before the Russian invasion. Yeah, nice. Nice on that one. God, I was jealous. Is there generally an easier window to start on? Uh, passenger side. It's not easier. It's, uh, it's the side I always recommend starting on, though, because you just kind of get in your rhythm by the time you go to the driver's side. I just always start on the passenger side. I like to keep things the same, too. So like if I'm cutting out my windows, I always cut them out on the passenger side. Boom, boom. Okay, I'll be nice. It's right here now, so I'll actually do this. Remind me. Then it won't go boom, boom. Yeah, so there's uh, the area that we live in, we're, we're, we're pretty happy with it. Um, we became more happy with it when, uh, when we kind of settled in and then realized where pricing and everything was going and all that. So we've been renting for ever. And I started the studio thing. I, my goal was to get it started and then continue to do that in like on my own property or something. But then I ran into this place, so wasn't able to do it from home. So then it was kind of like, okay, well, I guess we should start looking for a normal house to move or to buy. And you know, the market was crazy. And then so I was like holding off and holding off and the market is still crazy. And it was kind of like holding off, but we were, we'd still like taken some time to go around and look at stuff. And so what was pretty crazy is normal house prices have actually gone up so much that there was this neighborhood near us uh, that was getting built. And so obviously that makes it expensive, but the price of any other house we were gonna buy was gonna be a little less expensive, but then it needs work. So well, then you're basically financing the house and then everything else that you're doing to the house is out of pocket. Material costs are insane. Everything's more expensive. So essentially, uh, we would have been, we would have felt rushed into a home because anything nice that came on the market gets scooped up really, really quickly. So then you're kind of just taking a guess because you don't really have time to do a thorough inspection and then like negotiate back and forth a little bit and it's just a ridiculous process anyways. So then we walked into a couple of new builds and I thought it was like just way out of anything that we could do. And then I was talking to the guy and the next thing I know is we're putting money down for everything to start. 
that's one reason I thought that <laughs> somewhere along the lines I'd be like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Never mind. This isn't going to work out for you, sorry. You're going to have to go figure something else out. But no, we're, uh, we're closing in... Uh, we're closing Wednesday. Everything's all set. As long as I don't do anything incredibly stupid like go buy a car a day before closing, everything's fine. So when do you do an, a home inspection on a new build? Because normally you do it early on the buying process. Good question. I had no idea. Uh, we actually just had a, a home inspector come in um, Thursday. That was one reason I took Thursday. Um, so they have like a, a house tour, which we've already been there like five million times. So like there wasn't anything new they were really showing us. <laughs> but you know, they were talking about uh, some of the stuff and uh, like, you know, the some warranties on some stuff. There's a warranty on the build. Um, there's, you know, these are all the numbers that you can call. This is where your mailbox is. This is that. Um, just some things about the, the property and all that. And they don't necessarily expect you to go there every day. <laughs> but we definitely do. Sounds like you put 20. No, we ended up putting 10. So we have to also pay PMI, apparently. That's fun. And did you know Michigan taxes are fucking insane? So I don't, yeah, and I also don't have a home inspector that uh, like, like I looked around and I found an independent home inspector. So he came out, he looked at the property and everything. And um, we got a whole write-up of the house and everything. So there's no, no big problems uh, with the house that he found, just like some minor construction things that, that they should fix. Um, which is cool too, because they're, um, they have certain construction warranties and stuff. Um, that they're like, you will notice stuff as you settle, settle into the house and whatnot. And so if there's stuff that comes up, then we come out and we fix it up to a certain point. But yeah, we ended up putting 10% down and I was like, what do most people put down? And he's like, most people are only putting down 5% right now. I was like, what? So it was kind of a, it was really a surprising process. It literally is like walking into a, um, it's literally like walking into a new car dealership. Seriously, it's shockingly similar. You start talking to them, and like we had already looked around, so we kind of kept an eye on how fast people were still buying houses and whatnot. So when they said like, yeah, we expect this neighborhood to fill out pretty quickly, it wasn't just a sales tactic. It was like, oh no, we've already seen X amount of neighborhoods get filled out very quickly. So when we uh, locked in ours, it was maybe like the whole street got filled up over the course of the month. It like, it hung in there a little bit and then it like, this was around like holidays and then all of a sudden it just like filled out so fast. And as that's happening, the price of houses were still going up. So the base price of the house like jumped up like $40,000 from when we ended up locking in our price on the house, which is just kind of insane. I expect it'll probably come back down. <laughs> Things that go up really fast, they also come down really fast too. But uh, hang on, we're almost there. This one's a little far down and a little tight. It's 
sometimes I pull windows down really far and I don't have a good reason for when I do, but this is what it looks like when I do pull them down far on some windows, not every window, obviously. There we go. We got that in. Uh, if you accrue some equity 20% before the rates drop, you'll be able to get rid of the PMI when you refinance. Ah. Is it a pull? It is a pull T, actually. It's an insane amount that I don't want to say right now. I don't know. Should I say? It's expensive. I'm not like a flexi type of person or anything. It's just kind of like shocking. <laughs> oh, I was going to talk about state tax. Um, so uh, my rent's already like $2,000 a month right now. Um, it was 1700 It was going up $100 every year. Um, it would have been 18, 18 or 19. Um, and so that's, what's kind of crazy. Like about buying a property is like your overall expenses on, on that property drop. It's just about having like a down payment and stuff. The only caveat is, uh, initially you have to pay property taxes. Um, and then there's supposed to be like some sort of, uh, like you get a rebate or something. But Michigan property taxes, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> guess, guess how much, guess how much a month my property taxes are. It's almost like killed the whole thing for me. But that's just apparently what it is right now. One thousand. Ooh, you overshot a little bit. You're not far off though. That's what's kind of insane. I think it's like eight fifty a month in property taxes. Which we've talked to like some people that are in different states. Nine hundred, a thousand. Yep, you guys are like right on point. We've talked to like some people in different states and they're like Oh my God, it's like that for us a year. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? Why are we paying this every month? Toronto is 950. Damn. I guess that, because that's what they are by me. Yep, yep. Is, dude, that's... <sighs> that's crazy. Is it because it's a new build? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's just what they are in the city. So I think they change some from city to city and it might have to do with also when you buy it. I, like, I don't know. I don't know for sure. But I just know that's what we're having to pay. And after talking to some other people, they're like, yep, Mich that's Michigan property taxes. So I, like, I don't know if there's a difference when you sell and buy something. Hello, Tin Studio, how can I help you? Um, fortunately, we're all booked up today. The earliest I could get you in is Monday. Monday, I could do 10. All right, have a good one. California is overpriced. New York, 1200. Did you DRS your shares? No, I'm still in, uh, God, what are they called? TD. I'm, I just left everything in TD. I haven't touched it. 10% down. Then you got PMI when you get 20% equity loan value to look, get it removed if the bank doesn't. Yeah, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll remember that. I, I didn't even really know what it was. And then you see, like, it's uh, mortgage insurance that gets tacked on. So it's like an extra, I think, like 200 bucks a month or something. Which starts to look smaller and smaller as everything is more expensive. You're lucky you live in Detroit. Why is that?
That's nice to know where some other places are, are at. You know, that was one of the things too, is like when we got our interest rate too, and it's like, so we were quoted at like a 3.5 at the time, and that's where rates were. And then everything jumped up, and then they're like, oh, sorry, it's a five. We're like, oh shit. Hello, Tint Studio, how can I help you? Good, how are you? Sure, uh, do you want to do all the sides, uh, the back and the full windshield or just all the sides in the back? Okay, so the Model 3 is a little unique because of that back window. Um, yeah, we... Oh, okay, I gotcha. Uh, well, I can definitely do them. Um, I like to do the whole back window in one piece. Like there's some people I would hear they would cut it in half. It looks really ugly. Um, so f f for that uh, for that car, um, I've got a special order, a 60 inch wide roll. Um, so it just takes a couple extra days. So uh, s starting on that car um, would be all the sides in the back, no windshield. Let me just pull up my Racing on that. Yep, yep, we also do ceramic. So in ceramic, so starting on that car, all the sides in the rear would be 650. Um, it would be 750 for carbon. It would be 850 for ceramic. Yeah, there's a couple. Let me let me double check my stock right now. Um, did you have an idea of what shades you wanted to go with? Like something darker, something lighter. Thirty-five. Ooh, ooh. I might have that one actually. Because I had a guy. The last Model Three, I ordered uh, a couple of long rolls um, to accommodate for that one. I just got to remember. I'm checking what I got right here. 35, ooh. Yeah, let me dig this roll out of here. <laughs> no, you're in luck. I actually have the, the roll in stock in ceramic, so that's 35%. Uh, um, I could do that on, yeah, yeah. I couldn't do it today, but I could get you in on Monday. Um, I need that car dropped off for a good part of the day, so I probably 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that's when I open. Um, I could take it in then and just spend a good part of a day on it. Okay. Okay. How, do you know how many hours you need it for? Just so I know uh, to work a lot of my work. Um, I'm gonna say just four to five hours to be safe. Okay. 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 Um, how about, what's your name? My name's Matt. Okay, Wednesday I have, uh, I have scheduled already, so I do have an opening on Tuesday though, so that would work out really well. Just let me know as soon as you can, because once okay, people Tuesday? start calling, sometimes the schedule fills up really fast. Okay, what, what time uh, Tuesday? Tuesday I could do the same time, 10 o'clock. All righty, have a good one. Thank you, too. If you're going to do it, just do it. Finally a Tesla. Yeah, I don't get that many calls for uh, for Model 3s. I get, like, I, get, um, I get questions for them here and there. There's been a lot of Model Ys lately, though, or at least more than I usually do. I'm gonna shrink this side just a little bit too. But, yeah, I would just try and lock something in rather than waiting till Monday. 
but hey, maybe nobody will book until then. Usually it's at that point, no, somebody's not gonna actually book. He showed his number. Oops. Shit happens sometimes. You have five percent tin, so Kenny can't see into my windows. <laughs> PMI is a scam. Drop it with your refinance. No biggie. Yeah, it's like mandatory under like a twenty percent. I I just think it's a. It's a, like they say it's a mortgage insurance or something like that. So I'm just guessing it's, you know, if you drop out on the house, they get more money. It's just safeguard for them, I think, right? So at least that's the impression I got. Yeah, but the whole the whole thing was just kind of crazy. Um I kept saying it's it's a lot like a new car dealership. Dude, I can't even tell you how... Uh, I can't even tell you how... Uh, how crazy it is to walk in there, start talking to somebody when you're actually, like, interested in buying something. Because then all of a sudden you... Like, okay, I guess, I guess we'll go through. And the next thing you know, they actually need a ton of information from you right away when you're doing your home build. Oh, hang on. Hello, Tint Studio. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, for sure. Um, I could get you in Saturday the, um, the 23rd. Okay, I'll mark it down. Um, we confirm everything through a deposit, so what I'll do is I'll text you a link to our booking page. Um, if you need to change something on the schedule, it's okay, just let us know a little bit in advance. Um, but yeah, uh, make sure it, like, it makes sure that you got the spot. So I'll go ahead and text you a link over to the booking page, and once I get that, you'll be all set uh, for the 23rd at 10 o'clock. Yeah, no problem, I'll get that right over. Cool. Wow, I was surprised. <laughs> Usually people, when they get off the phone, something happens, they don't call back, especially when they say they're going to call back on Monday. He seemed genuine, but... Scheduling your model three for Saturday the 23rd at... 10 a.m. You're paying their insurance policy? Okay, yep. Yep, sounds right. <laughs> I get it. I get it. You know, I expect to get screwed over 60 different ways. Yeah, that's Model 3. So I, we're closing on, on <laughs> so we're closing on Wednesday. Then, uh, so we're moving then part Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I just booked a car for Saturday because I still have to do some appointments during all of this. Seems like ever since you mentioned legal Zoom the other day has been advertised before your live streams the past couple of days. Just thought it was interesting. They're good, man. Google is Google is on it. I tell ya. New pushbacks on deposits? No, never. So I've I've never taken deposits before I started doing my own thing here. But what I recognized very early on was just how freely other people are gonna waste your time. So I always, I always clarify what they're for too, as I say it's a deposit. Most people are maybe just a little surprised. They're like, oh, they require a deposit. Um, but they don't ever say it. 
So then all I say is like, hey, it's just to ensure somebody is holding the spot. Um, and then I, uh, sometimes I remember to say this, back it up with why. Um, somebody holds the spot because I'm blocking off X amount of hours to work on your car. And then that, that really clicks very quickly. It's like, oh, well, they're blocking off that time to work on my car. So if I don't show up, I'm a dick. And anybody that is serious about spending money with you is not going to have a problem with the deposit because they're like they're already serious about spending money with you. So it's like, oh, okay. Well, if it doesn't cost me anymore, then it's no big deal. Yeah, I always like to clarify too that it goes towards the cost of the job. I like hate having to say it every time, but just to be clear, like, yeah, we take a deposit. It's not a surprise additional charge. It's just to confirm that you're, <sighs> mm -hmm. yeah. And honestly, this market helps with everything right now. So a lot of people have become way more patient on things. So it's almost expected like, hey, you know, if you want to order a piece of furniture, you're not going to get it for four or five months. If you, you want a car, it depends on the car. Sometimes a couple months, sometimes a year right now. And I don't have to make a phone call to see where they're at. Maybe once or twice. But I literally just, I don't even pay attention. At the appointment time, they walk in the door or you know, right around that appointment time, they're either calling because they're having trouble finding the place <laughs> or they're walking in the door. And look, I'm not interested in keeping your deposit money either. Um, if all of a sudden like, hey, I scheduled that um, a week from now or like, Hey, a couple days, something came up. It's like, yeah, no worries, whatever. Like, but if you're going to not show up for the appointment, that's different with the deposit at that point. But what it really does is like, does that pay then for the time? No, but that's not like it. It's a cost of doing business. It just ensures that people are coming in and not just booking spots. Because it's free to book a spot. Where are you at in the alley? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so uh, my website is on Wix right now. I want to change it, but they have a um, little booking calendar thing that I use. And so the schedule looks a little scattered. Key is in sleep mode. Okay. Well, come on. Wake up. Move key, then start. Whoa. You have to move the key? Key is in sleep mode. I didn't know keys had a sleep mode. I thought the car had a sleep mode. Anyways. Yeah, my website's through Wix. It's kind of janky, um, but it works. Um, detailer's roadmap. I'm, I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to get them to build me a site. They already talked to me before. Um, and I was supposed to have a meeting f for them and I never scheduled anything. I just got busy. But at this point, I'm like, they're just, they're going to be super good. In this day and age, um, your website really needs to do more than just be a business website, but just having a business website is important. Something that talks about your business, looks halfway professional.
That hasn't happened in a while. Popped out. <laughs> Maybe it was how you said it. I don't know. Somebody said, uh, somebody need to, needed to reschedule to the next day. I told him he could only do that this one time. He said, keep my 40 and then canceled. <laughs> I don't know. It must have been how it came across because that's, uh, Yep, it didn't sound like he took it too well. Or maybe it's just one of those people, I don't know. Are you gonna stream the Model 3? Yeah, most likely. It's on this Saturday. That's, that's all, I'm, I'm gonna leave it for that, that Saturday. <gasps> Aww. My boy's got a uh, a little a new water toy. He's got one of those water play tables. <laughs> That's cute. He likes splashing. I did too when I was little. <sighs> After ten to fifteen seconds, it sleeps. Other keys, you can use keys to stroke the key sleep if it lives in the drawer. Oh, interesting. So I press and hold the button so the vehicle stays awake, usually for like, I, I actually don't know how long it is. But press and hold it for like five to 10 seconds and you'll wake everything up and it'll go into ignition mode. I just, I don't think I've ever noticed the message on the dash that said the key was asleep. That was a little surprising. So I've noticed I've had to like sometimes lock and unlock the car, but it, didn't, it said like literally move the key. And I was like, oh, huh. It was only a ceramic, two windows, and I've done a lot of work for his employees. Huh. Yeah, it, it, surprising. I don't know. <laughs> Weird to have that kind of reaction. It just must have not, must have been a misunderstanding. It's in my disclaimer. He read before clicking the link to pay, and he did it an hour before his appointment, too. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Probably just a busy guy. Took it the wrong way. Okay, um, so we're getting this a little bit untangled. We gotta do this back window. So we're gonna plotter cut the rear three on this. Sierra, there we go. It flips down, very easy back window. This upper channel, it just stays out of your way. There's a nice border around the whole thing. Thank you. <laughs> it's cute. All right. Okay, new seats. How do you fold down? I know how you do this part. It's always like... It's not that. That's for the uppers. Anybody know? Whoa. I guess it just clips in. There's no release lever. Okay, cool. We did it. He's got that button in the middle. Oh yeah, this will be easy peasy. Let's see if we can pull up some film. So Pro Nano 50 is still going on the back. It's got a really nice match though. 15 on the front, 50 over the rear. 
It looks shockingly close. No, this goes up. Forty goes there. That goes there. Clip this down. We're good on Pro Nano settings. Bring this over. Enter. Let's look at a back window. See how many we can cut out. So we need to bring up film cut. Twenty two. GMC Sierra. It's gonna be a crew. Twenty-two through nineteen. How about twenty-three? Because this is new new. No can do. Twenty-two. GMC Sierra. Right? Fifteen hundred? What do you think? You think that's the right shape? We could try it. That's the worst that could happen. It's wrong. The body hasn't changed? Okay, so we're probably good then. Let's do it. Why did I pick the middle one? It's a nice thing about windows on a lot of vehicles. Windshields can change a lot. Doors and back glasses and everything, they generally stay the same for a while. It's only until there's like a total model change. Cause like wiring changes, paneling changes, windows. Nope, they just use the same ones a lot of time. So we'll see. Looks right. Does that one have Super Cruise? What's Super Cruise? I actually have no idea what that even is. Well, I don't like that. Well, ugh. <laughs> GM's version of autopilot's like regular crews, but super. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Fuck. I hate this. It didn't go through all the way. It went through most of the way go through all the way. We will just trace it now. I should double check. I'm pretty sure it was set for, oh, you know what? It was probably set for carbon. It's my bad. I saw a 60 number. I think it was th something else. I think it was literally like a motor placement or something. I don't, I. 
now that I I have to go back over the footage, but I'm pretty sure it was my mistake, which sucks. Because let me go look at it right now. You did carbon yesterday. Yeah, so move was 73. I think it was move 60, and I, yeah, it's on 45. It should be on 63. Yep, this was yesterday's. That's fine. We can just trace them. It's just a little more annoying, but at least I know that's my bad rather than, again, going off on the machine. <laughs> Stupid. This thing can't cut anything. Oh, wait. Yes, it can. That makes sense. Measure twice, cut once. No, it, it cut. We're cutting twice now. <laughs> Actually, yes. The machine should do what you mean, not what I say. Yeah, I told it to cut out carbon. I didn't want it to, though. It should know. Now, it was on the last setting, which is the where you move the plotter head. It just was funny. Funny coincidence. It just happened to be on, like, 64 or 63 or 64 or whatever. It was, like, stupid close. What fell? Oh, there's the stool. Okay. Oh, this goes on the other one? Oh, this goes on the other side. My bad. I'm cutting out the wrong one. Let's put you down there for a second. gonna trace something you probably should finally clean the surface I need to, oh my God, that's the moment I've been waiting for. <laughs> Should I have Jack go through and clean my glass boards? All the little pieces just get annoying to me. I don't mind leaving them there. I just, cleaning, like sitting there and picking all the little pieces off drive me crazy. There we go. Yeah, this is the right way. All right, I'm gonna dust this off one more time. <laughs> I didn't know it meant that much. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. that's a pretty good fit there, except for these little buttons. Buttons. There we go. Overlap. And we can trim them off. Yep, good size. Am 
Why is the Tesla got a schedule when I'm moving? Actually, the better question is why why did I schedule the Tesla for when I'm moving? But I got to double check to make sure he left the deposit cuz no deposit, no appointment. But he seemed pretty pretty insistent on making it happen. I want that truck. The updates on this is pretty awesome. So I drive quite a few new vehicles in and everything, you know, it's not that things are nice. It's just not super often that I see a dramatic change that I go, whoa, this is actually a really cool update. So I wasn't expecting a new Sierra to be surprising. The update just from literally pulling it in from the parking lot to here. Just the dash change, the screens, the heads up display, the 360 cameras on it. Hey, they, did, they did some nice stuff on this now. I feel like it's finally, like, I mean, it's been modern, but when you're talking about really being up to date and competing, You gotta, you gotta pull out all the steps, especially in the truck world, man. Isn't Sierra like lower on the totem pole? Or is it Ram? Which one's more popular? So the F-150 is the most popular. Then what's next? Is it the Ram? Or is it the F-150? Or is it the Ram or the like Sierra slash Silverado? I forget where they stack up. Rams next. Yeah, so come on, GM, you gotta you gotta pull out all the stops. You're number three. So they did a nice job on this. That's when you really start to see a change. All right, we gotta bring out our A game. They're number four. Who's no? What is Silverado number three and Sierra's number four? Oh my God, F two fifty is number three. Oh okay, I gotcha. Damn. <laughs> All right, they're really not playing around then. If Ford can knock out spots one and three, yeah, yeah, you really got to step up your game. Because that's just it. You can't even do what the competitors are doing. You have to do something more than what the competitors are doing, and that's always a hard thing to figure out. Yeah, in the last five years, Ram is up there. Yeah, by the sheer number of them that I've tinted. It also helps that there's a, like, they build all the Rams around here. There's a Chrysler, Chrysler plant. And it's funny, there's like, so I drive over the bridge and you can see like a parking lot full of Rams. And I almost want to make a TikTok and go, what chip shortage? <laughs> But no, they actually do. They actually have a shortage, and they just can't put all the features in them. Yeah, Sterling Heights, there's like, uh, there's a GM, so GM tech plant, and then there's also the uh, Chrysler plant over here.
DF-350, number six or seven. <laughs> so, Ford's doing pretty well. <laughs> That's good. That's cool to see. I mean, it says a lot when you're not only number one, but you're also number three and five <laughs> or seven or whatever it is. That's impressive. And then they got their lightning too. It's good. I'm glad that they made it into a truck. There's been, we're finally, I think, starting to see a trend come back around instead of just doing outrageously designed electric vehicles. People are now going like, oh, oh, people like our cars. They just want an electric version of our cars. No oh, shit. Yeah, you don't have to make it look god awful. So with the with the electric F one fifty, I think it's uh, I think it's a cool it's a cool move. Sweet! It's lined up nice. Soon the Cybertruck will be number one. <laughs> Cybertruck's like, you want to make a statement. It's, it still is one of like the ugliest controversial designs. But people hold Tesla in such high regard that they're like, huh, I kind of like it. I still think it looks bad. But they're doing what you got to do. They got to make a statement with it. They got lots of attention. They didn't just make a truck. So if you're like breaking into a territory like that, I think you have to be very different. But if you're already one of the most popular trucks and there's like this big niche that you can fill with just like, oh, we could make an electric version of our most popular vehicle. Yeah, do that. There's a guy in Oklahoma. He had a 2014 Lightning and a switch that could switch it from st to straight exhaust. Oh, that's pretty cool. I've seen um, a couple, uh, couple vehicles come in here that could do something like that, although not 500 horsepower. <laughs> but it's cool to see stuff like that where you could still leave it in, in somewhat of a, a daily driver type mode, but then when you want to open up the exhaust, then you can. That's super cool. Just adds more character. All right, so we are pretty done with the rear. We gotta do the front. I wanna close both those doors and just take a look really quick at the match. So 15, remember we did 15 carbon, and then on the rear um, was it metered at 22. So I ended up putting 50 over it because that ended up metering at 10. And then that's kind of, that's the look right there. It's on camera. I'm not sure how similar it looks in person. That is, that is really, really close. That's nice to see. I'm glad that that worked out. Cool. So now we got the windshield to do though. And we're going to do 35. It'll look lighter in front. 
because of the windshield. Yeah, I'm more looking from like there's the exterior match, and then the the one I'm more I'm always more critical on is how does the inside look? Because if the inside matches, then then the outside is going to be just whatever the outside is. That's when you have to take care of the windshield. Some people, oh, like a handful of people seem to be the other way. They're like, I don't care what it looks like on the inside, just as long as it looks similar on the outside. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, I got to go darker then. You're so tall. Thank you. I'm so tall. Should we lift this? I suppose. Oh. Okay. Trying to not carry things around. Those stay there. And then we pick up duplicates over on this side. So that, that, yeah, these hooks aren't very good anyways. We're gonna put that back over there. We're gonna use these ones. I got new ones. These ones are, oh my God, these ones are strong. So we got that, and then where's my sprayers in there? Cool. Seems to be working pretty well. Leaving things on their on the either side with all the sides in the rear. I gotta keep that up with the windshield. This is where I really misplace a lot of stuff. Cause there's, there's so much back and forth. Like I grab a glass aid roll, I run around the car, I set something down. Then especially with these uh, exterior squeegees, misplace those. I put a mark on all the passenger side tools, so that way I just know which side goes where. So if I'm holding something, I go, which side? I know, I know. See, I'm on top of it. It's the only way this is gonna work. So we can set that stuff there, we can organize it afterwards. See, and then the phone rings. Hello, Tin Studio, how can I help you? Oh yeah, for a quote. I'm sorry if I didn't get back to you yet. What um what's the vehicle? Oh, a Jetta. An old Oh, I think I remember this one. I forgot to send you back a quote. Okay, so you've got let me see projects. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, live streaming right now, but I can I can take a minute and we can go look at the car and I can I can talk to you about all the films and stuff. So yeah, so uh, just to give you a heads up, we're located at the rear corner of the building. Um, so it's a brown L-shaped building. Just drive around, you'll see a sign on the door. Yeah, no problem. I'll see you soon. Okay. <laughs> You're so tall. All right, so let's get this mostly prepped before he shows up. He's got a Volkswagen wagon golf. And I think the whole thing is tinted and he needs the tint removed and retinted because it's old. So I gotta go out and quote that job. Not exactly something I'm excited about. But if we must do it, 
we must do it. All right, hang on, there we go. No Menards in Oklahoma. Damn, that sucks. Menards a fun one to walk through. It's kind of like um, walking through Harbor Freight, except like it. So it, they're Harbor Freight is really good for like tools and storage and like all these odds and ends and stuff. Menards is like crazy in that same regard. Like it's it's like a Home Depot, it's like a Lowe's, except like sometimes way bigger and with like a, a more niche selection of certain things. It's really, really cool. Harbor Freight is one I always forget about and then but that's where we got like perfect place to get these carts from, stuff like that. Lots of um, tools, everything. Obviously a cheaper place too, but the shit they make is actually pretty good. Okay, dry shrink prep baggie, couple sprays. Yeah, that's kind of nuts. 120 for the carts. And they look good. Because I can get inexpensive carts, but they're all red. <laughs> they're all red or black. And I just wanted to go for a cleaner look. So things don't get super dirty around here. I'm glad that... Uh, Glad I went with that. Okay, dry shrink prep baggies on that one. See, everything in its place. What cutting program are you using? I'm using Film Cut. Uh, what percent are you putting on the windshield? Uh, we're going to be doing this percent, actually. We're doing Pro Nano 35. Did an install today. Had a lot of static, tiny hairs when cleaning and installing any tips. Um, not really. Did you get a bunch of little hairs like in the install? What happens? Because like I've had staticky film. None of these films have ever been staticky to me. Um, and so I've never had to deal like, you know, in the winter time things dry out. So like you can get some electrical pops and stuff with fabric, but I haven't really had to battle static so much, so I'm not sure. I think the hairs come from my dryer towel. Yeah, that's possible. So these towels aren't lint-free, like they'll always leave little things behind. Um, but your cleaning should take care of everything. Because you're not wiping anything with a towel before you go to install it. You're squeegeeing it. Canon. 
Oh, it's not even open. All right, I gotta go look at this thing. I'll be back.
Neat. All right. Well, I booked something for Monday now. <laughs> Nobody has anything to say. Uh, new version. No, I don't want to update yet. Well, it's boring. If I'm not here, it's boring. Maybe it is boring if I'm still here. Oh, no video shoot. <laughs> I know, it's bittersweet, right? But that's how schedule works, I swear. It's like I get, I almost, like I start to get almost a little nervous because I have openings, but I also have a lot of stuff going on too next week. Oh, I gotta trim this still, let me do that. But now he's, uh, he scheduled carbon on, uh, on Monday. So that's super cool. So there's still video opportunity. It just depends on, <laughs> it just depends on uh, if I can think of something to shoot while I'm doing the car or I'll opt to live stream it. On that one, I'm not sure I will. I think it's gonna take me, unfortunately, I think it's gonna take me long enough just to do on its own. It's like an early 2000s uh, Jetta. It's actually not tinted. I got it confused with another inquiry. He sent me uh, a request yesterday and I just haven't got around to anything today yet. So we swung in today, which is cool. I don't mind that. Is there a big difference between carbon and ceramic? Getting mine done this week, but the shop only offers basic or carbon. Ew, why? Why the... Tell them they're cutting themselves short. So here's the thing. Carbon is a great option. It's, um, it's a way to keep the budget down and still get um, some heat rejection out of it. But carbon doesn't block... Um, actually, no, I can't say that. The more, the darker that you go on carbon, the more heat that it's gonna block out. Because carbon is what actually colors the film and also blocks the heat. So with a dyed film, you can go darker and it doesn't hardly block any more heat because the dye is not doing much to block the film or to block the heat. With ceramic, the ceramic layer is what blocks the heat And so you can go incredibly light and block out more heat with ceramic. So ceramic's gonna be your best option, but there's nothing wrong with going with a nice carbon or a nice dyed film. It just depends on like what you were looking for and where your budget sits. Tell them, tell them they need to at least also carry a ceramic film when you go in for your appointment. Maybe that'll wake them up. Because they're just cutting their sales short by not having an option. Like, oh, we only have carbon and ceram or carbon and dyed. And it's like, whoa, why only two? Come on, man, get ceramic. Not everybody's gonna get it, but some people are looking for it, especially when, like, <laughs> you're not my client. And you're walking into their, into their business and I'm telling you why ceramic is awesome. And I just wanna, I want you to blow their minds and say, hey, you guys should carry ceramic too. <laughs> Them VW seals, yeah. Honestly, the windshield is gonna be the least fun. The lower panels, 
lower corners, uh, the paneling touches the glass. It's going to be a little tricky for me to, to tint that one, but I'll figure it out. What carbon film would you, would you suggest if surrounding areas was around 200 to 230 to have quality film but still want to make a profit? Uh, so I don't think you necessarily have to stay in line with everybody else. I mean, whatever the product is, is going to cost, you're still going to, like, carbon is still pretty budget friendly, so you're going to make money on it. I don't really like to sacrifice material quality because when you when you do on carbon and ceramic, you get hazy film. And you really don't save that much money per car anyways. So you might as well raise your price a little bit and just install a better film. The trick is you got to attract people uh, that are a little bit more into their cars and looking for something. Like, they're, they're not just calling around looking for tent. Because that's the, that's the mindset a lot of people get into is, oh, people aren't looking for something good. They're just calling around looking for whatever. No, people are also researching. You're not doing anything to attract those people. You fit in line with every other budget shop on the street, and you need to do something to change it up. So I said this very early on when I started things out of my home garage. I don't know if this is going to work for me, but we're going to see how this goes. And I started dyed jobs at 240. I was doing carbon for like 295, and then I was doing ceramic for I think 400, maybe 450, um, but I think it was a little less expensive. Um, and then I was getting calls. Where's my coffee? I'm looking for my coffee. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I can't place my coffee in the same spot. We need two coffees. So what I really noticed was it takes time to get your name out there and build up a client base, but the people that you attract very early on sets the tone for future business. Some of your first customers can be some of your best clients, honestly. And those are going to be referrals for more business. So I had worked at shops. I, I, had, I had worked at some shops that did, um, they only sold one film, or I worked at some other shops where they sold dyed carbon and ceramic, and they were doing really well. I just was never up front learning sales. And so I was like, I'm out of a home garage. I don't know how I'm gonna, like, if it's going to work the same for me or not. But I've been so trained by other companies to basically just offer, you know, just expect that tint is tint and most people don't really care. And then I got a real rude awakening one day when I was, I assumed on a front door match. Client came in, oh, front doors to match? Okay, no problem. And I was live streaming that day. And then his family was watching the live stream, and I was doing more than one job that day. Um, more than one job, so it was like, oh yeah, I'll do this, then I'll do the front doors on live stream or whatever. That front door job, I assumed that all he wanted was it to match. It was a, it was a brand new red, um, God, it wasn't a Durango, might have been a Tahoe or something like that. It was really nice, though. 
brand new, and he was like, and and his fa and we were talking about different films on stream, and his family messaged him, and they were like, hey, did he tell you about the carbon and the ceramic? And he said no. Next thing you know, I go back up front and I peel off the front doors because he decided to do the entire thing in carbon instead of just a dyed set of doors on the front because I just assumed people aren't looking for anything nicer. It's just always spend time with everybody that walks through your door, show them the different options, talk to them. How many days are you booked and how many do you usually do a day? Well, this week was pretty good. So I was actually, I've been scheduling more appointments on the same days. So generally I'm not taking any more than two to three appointments in a day. So if they're like full cars with windshields, I'm pretty much scheduling two a day. If they're just full cars, then I'll, I'll slot in maybe an extra set of doors or, or something else. I always am trying to make time to also stream. So, and I, I got in the habit of spacing things out in the winter time, because I've only been in business here for like two years. So I had a pretty healthy schedule um, after Monday. <laughs> and then people booked out for the rest of the week, pretty much like Monday and Tuesday. And then, you know, I'm like, okay, this is good. And I should have people calling by the end of the week. And next thing I know, I'll, I'll have next week booked out. And then it comes to Saturday. I'm like, I still got Monday and Tuesday open. What is going on right now? And now I've got, now I got Monday. Um, I got a pretty big project for Monday. And, uh, I don't know, there's supposed to be a Tesla that's supposed to schedule for Saturday. I haven't double checked on that though. So not crazy right now. Oh, it's a dry shrink prep booger. Just wondering how not doing the back window should change the price. Um, I don't know, it's up to you. So I start all the sides in the rear, uh, 290, so I knock uh, 90 bucks off if they're not doing the back glass. The challenging thing is to kind of pick apart a job like that. I don't. Oh yeah, I, I should uh, finish prepping the inside too. Let me squeegee the inside out. Can I use masking tape as glass aid? Yeah, it's just not gonna be super flexible around the corners, but um, I found that you usually need to double up on it too. But yeah, you could use other tapes. Glass aid's thicker, so it'll round corners nice and uh, and you don't have to double up on it. Never really seen you price a back window, windshield. Okay, so this is, the, this is kind of the challenge. If somebody just calls and asks for only a back windshield, it's generally gonna be more expensive than piecing or than getting a full car. Like compared to the rest of the work that they're getting done. So let's say you know, what, you charge 150 to do a windshield. On a back window, I'd probably still charge 150 bucks to do the back windshield. But if you, if, if they only get the sides and you knock off the back window, that's not 150 bucks, what happened there? Well, typically, you're, the way I look at it is you're kind of getting a bundled price. I've got your whole car here. 
And so while I'm working on the sides, it's easy then to just add the back window. Where if I'm not working on the sides, I'm just doing the appointment for only the back window, then it's a lot of setup just for the one window. So there'll generally just be, if you do a couple windows, it'll be more expensive than if you get even more windows than that done relative to like, you know, I'm not gonna charge you the price of a full car in the front doors. But yeah, it's kind of like a, a bundled discount, essentially is what that is. I'm gonna have to open this up next time. That'll be next time. We're gonna use this one, mainly because it's clean, so I'll shoot a video with it. So sometimes I'll have people call. It doesn't happen near as much anymore, but it would definitely happen when I didn't charge, uh, when I worked at other shops that didn't charge very much. Um, you know, they would, oh, a full car's 200 bucks. Oh, okay, how much is it for just this one window? How much is it for just the back window? And it's like, <laughs> I cut people off at that point. Rather than keep piecing it out on every request, I go, hey, 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 what are you actually looking to tint on your car? That way I can give you like a proper quote because I don't just piece things out like that. It doesn't make any sense. So, like, I understand... Some people like to have a, a big pricing sheet with everything listed and then they can just reference their pricing sheet and they kind of know how everything costs. I mean, when you have some additional staff, you probably need to do something like that. So everybody's on the same page. But I tend to fire from, from the hip a little bit on pricing. I have like, generally my starter price that I don't go below and then from there, um, like this one, we're doing carbon on the front two and ceramic on the rest of it. So like, yeah, there'll be a little bit of a pricing break on it, but it's not gonna be anything crazy, but it was more so he could have 15% on the front and then he went with ceramic on the rest of it. Oh my God, this really comes up high. This is one of the few ones I might pull a towel on. This gauge cluster, man, this reminds me of the Camaros. I guess that's kind of fitting. Oof. This one's... It makes sense to have a bundled feet. Yeah. And so what you're going to have is most people are going to call for... Like, you can try and have, oh, what's my pricing for only the back? What's my pricing for this? What's my pricing for that? Like, 80 to 90% of your customers are going to call for the full thing, uh, the front doors only, or the front doors with the full windshield. That's, like, the vast majority of people. Oh, my God. This thing is not fun. Hang on. This is all okay. This part is, uh, is not going to be fun. How much do you charge for removals? Um, last removal I did, I charged two fifty. Removals, I hate them. They, they suck. They don't make sense. <laughs> Because here's the thing that sucks about it. Like, I don't have any material, but I've got hard labor in it. Honestly, I'll probably teach Jack how to do it, and then I can keep costs down. So when it's myself, I would charge 100 or 250 um, to do, like, all the sides in the rear on a removal. But that's with me doing it. Honestly, I should just have Jack do it. <laughs> Removals are just time-consuming, and you can teach anybody to do them. Ugh, I don't like this at all. I think I'm like most of the way there. It's just the corners are kind of got me a little stumped on this one. 
Because what I think I'm going to do, like, is almost get everything sprayed and installed, or, like, about to install it, and then I'll just pull the towel back. This seems like one of those windshields where I'm going to end up fighting the towel instead of just getting it installed. Is Jack here today? No, he takes Saturdays off. Let me see. Maybe I can get this in here. Yeah, I think I'm going to do all my prep. And then I'll pull this right before I go to install it. I don't think this is going to be easy. Unless we've managed to get this tucked down just right. It's not bad. I'll just make the best of it. What would look better, windshield on its own or windshield with a sunstrip? Um, I think it's just going to be up to the owner. Oh, am I supposed to pay him more for that, too? <laughs> Dang, the boss lets him have... Dude, I let him, like, so I don't need him here for as many hours as I have him here. It's just the time that I need him here is really important. But it's cool because he's the type of guy that you can seem to to give a fair amount of space on, and he'll just find stuff to do. And then a really competent person is going to have things handled, and then the, so there probably isn't there's like not something to do every second of every day. So, yeah, especially with the type of schedule that I have, too. Like, I had to be somewhere else on Wednesday. So I just told him, I'm like, well, you could come in and put the carts together if you want and help organize up some more if you want to get some hours in, but you don't have to be here if you don't want to <laughs> because I'm not going to be here tomorrow. And he's like, oh, okay. Um, I'll think about it. And then he just took the day off. That's fine. Came in the next day and knocked out the carts and cleaned up everything that you needed to. Put out the orders, perfect. But, you know, that part's nicer on me, too, because if he doesn't show up, then I don't have to pay for hours that he's not here. All right, let's clean the inside and get this thing installed. Matt's giving his employee any day he wants off. Almost. So we went the, so like July 4th weekend, I was here on that Monday. And so he was taking Saturday off and the 4th was on a Monday. So I'm like, hey, if you could, like, I need you to come in, do the orders in the morning. And then you can literally take Tuesday, um, you can take the rest of Monday off and Tuesday if you really want. And then he did. I was like, okay, no worries. He's still younger. He's, he's got other stuff going on. He 
he's got this job to make some money and do something more interesting and more fun. But, you know, he's still young. He likes having some freedom. I'm not looking for... Honestly, I'm not looking for a 9 to 5 everyday person. Because I just... I'd under... I'd underutilize it. Does he want to learn how to tint? Um, yeah, he's expressed some interest, but I don't need a tinter right now. I need somebody to handle all the other stuff. So, eventually, or once I get maybe more of a commitment, because he's still taking classes, and he's going to be here through, I think, about a year. Um, but he still might apply for a college out of state. He's kind of on the fence with it right now. So we'll see. Why is everybody obsessed with how many cars you can do in a day? Because that's, that's where the money is. How much money can I make in a day? Tell me. I don't have time to do lots and lots of cars every day. Also, I don't want to. Not anymore. I like taking time with the cars that I get. But realistically, how much can a proficient tenor How many cars can like you realistically do in a day? We'll plan two hours for a full car. Uh, when you're pretty proficient, you can do it under two cars or under two hours. And then, how many hours do you want to work in a day? So, I don't know, anywhere from like four to six full cars. But you burned yourself out. Oh yeah, there's a lot of days I was tired. You kind of get used to it. But what really happens is eventually you make a certain amount of money and then you see how hard you have to work to make that amount of money. And then you start to think about things where, hey, if I take a day off, now I'm not making that money anymore. How do I change that? Or how do I make more money without working harder? That's the, that's the long game. So each and every one of you <laughs> at some level will go from, hey, I'm making really good money doing what I'm doing and I'm very happy, and then you'll get older, and then life will hit and be like, oh, I won't be young forever. I'm going to have to have other people tinting for me, but you are that same guy that the more, oh, <laughs> I hate that argument. We'll talk about that one in a minute. But eventually, a lot of you younger guys are going to want to shop and then have other people tinting for you, but you got to remember you were that guy that didn't want to tint for somebody either. It's tough, man. It's tough to scale past yourself. The more money you make, the more taxes you have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, of course. Hello, Tint Studio, how can I help you? Uh, what kind of vehicle? Jeep Compass. A Jeep Compass? So you want it to do all the sides and rear? Yeah, and a windshield. Oh, with the full windshield, it's more than four windows. Uh, it would start at 450. Yes, sir. How much without the windshield? Without the windshield would be 290. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good one. <laughs> How are you going to say four windows? How are you going to say, I want to tint four windows?
And then, oh, it's the full compass with the windshield. What about that is four windows? Oh, the more money you pay, make the higher percentage? Well, here's the thing. You just make clear past whatever that mark is. I own a car wash, making money when you're sleeping. Yeah, that's the best money, is when you can make money not doing anything. But that does get boring too, so as long as you have hobbies. <laughs> or another way to make money then. Okay, so what I'm gonna do at this point It's a compass though. So you got what? If it's a new one, which it probably wasn't. You've got four doors. You've got two quarter windows, unless they don't have a quarter window on that. Then you have a back window, five, and then a front windshield, six for sure, at least. <laughs> that was funny. What time is it? Oh yeah, it's about time for those calls. It's the late afternoon, looking to get it done on the weekend crowd. For cheap. Oh shit. I just woke up and I realized I have money in my bank account. I need to do something with that money. Tint. I should be able to get tint right now. <laughs> but what really kills me is they sound so tired when they pick up the phone. How much do you charge for window tint? This shit's inconvenient. I gotta go back to bed. It's just funny. Especially from a, I don't, I don't, no, it's fine. Especially from a 313 area code. So, my dumbass did a 313 area code. <laughs> I'm probably gonna change my phone number. I, so Detroit's a 313 area code, so that when I was getting a phone number, I was like, yeah, it's Detroit Tint Studio, do a 313. I should have done the 248 area code. 248. Two four eight's nicer. Three one three's Detroit and five eight six. Five eight six is somewhere in between. It's okay. He probably thought he was being smart. No, I don't I don't think he was thinking. <laughs> I think he was literally just on his phone waking up, Googling tent. Tent. Four windows, I think. I don't know. It's got windows. Does it have windows? Maybe. <laughs> what kind of film? What's that? He was high AF. That's the right answer. <laughs> That's where I need to change my, uh, I think some people like to be clever by just 
sounding like they woke up or they're dumb. I maybe. <laughs> I don't know what that's gonna change for him though. <laughs> All right, so I gotta stretch this out past that gauge cluster, and then I'm gonna tuck this in. This is very, it's not as hard as the Camaro, but this reminds me of, of doing a windshield on a Camaro. The gauge cluster is just a little bit higher, especially with that uh, backup or that heads up display. Well, I've seen enough of them in person that most of them are actually not that smart. <laughs> and they'll wake up and be out by like, you know, probably about 12, 1 o'clock. I tin it out in Pontiac for long enough, I know. How much do you charge for a Model 3 full rear windshield in ceramic? Why just the rear windshield? How much for, oh, I mean all? Oh, okay, so the Model 3 in ceramic, 950. Um, the sunroof on a, com <laughs> on a compass <laughs> of all the cars. So it depends on how panoramic it is. Usually some have like one panel here, one panel there. It'd be a hundred per panel in ceramic. If it's one big piece, then plan on it at least costing like two to 250. Um, but it just depends on like how, um, how difficult it is. Most panoramics, um, I, it just depends on the car. Some have really, really big panoramic roofs, and oh, there's still quite a few cars that have them split into two pieces and call them a panoramic. So if there's like a nice dot border around it, then it's, it's a couple hundred. If it's a lot more complicated than that, then it'd be more. You didn't need to pull the towel back. Why not? Are you tinting this? It would have completely got in my way. It was tight enough without or with the towel or without the towel there. So I just pulled it back to free up some space so I can do this in one go. Rather than have to tint this two or three times with the towel there. I mean, it's not as bad as an Audi. Ugh. You're cheap on sunroofs. My price for a ceramic basic one small is 170. Damn, look at you go. That's nice. You know, I, sunroofs is one of those things that I hardly ever do. Oh, I got my fingers almost wedged in there. Uh, 
I don't hardly get any asks about a sunroof. And like my blazer, they're more simple than a door window a lot of the time. When you get into something like an F-150, they're still split, but you know, they're a little harder to get to. They're bigger, a um, little bit more irritating. So it's a hun I just do 100 per, but I'm hardly ever doing them. Is Cool View a good ceramic product? I have heard of them. I don't know much of them though. So probably, but I've never, never used them. I always kind of laugh, like, at, at, like, the, let's see, let me just get this, please don't peel out, it's just tight here, there we go, nice, I kind of laugh at the, at, at, like, the misspelled names, so cool view. It's like a play on words. I don't know. It always struck me as kind of a weird brand name, but I've heard about them for a while. It's a ceramic film that doesn't have angle glare. What's angle glare? The biggest thing with uh, ceramic is going to be haze. So a nice film, like the glue should be nice and smooth so you're not going to have any distortions. If you do, then it's just a, it's either a bad roll or a cheap film. But as far as haze goes, um, yeah, I installed Pro Nano by Geo. You know, at this point it gets tough for me to assume because I think that too. And then I go on like a long tangent about it and then they're like, oh wait, no, I was talking about this completely other different thing. But yeah. I stick to what I know. With the ceramic tint talk thing, makes company name Clearview Ceramic. What? Is the superior charcoal film from Tint Depot a carbon film? No, it is a dyed film. It's a really good one. Um, when you click on it, it should have a description that tells you a little bit more about it. It'll probably say a fourth, fourth gen deep dive film. I just had Lexan switch to Geo. The difference between them is incredible. Nice. Ooh, see, this one has a mark on it. This goes on the other side. So does this one. That's how I solve that. All right, let's wipe this down. Oh, I didn't account for that. I have a couple heat gun holders. Those are gonna be here, I think on, I said Saturday, and now it says Sunday. So that'll be pretty cool. What? I'm using global and I 
Chinese guys came and sell me a roll with the same IRR, but it doesn't have haze. Nice. Well, that's good. Then the only thing to worry about is, is it going to last? And you really won't know that until later on. I think, uh, I think what you're going to see is, you know, as as carbon and ceramic evolves, the, it's one of those natural things. The price eventually will come down some too. On material costs, competition will pick up more. But that being said, there is a big catch with it all. It's literally like one thing that defines the clarity of the films you install is just the grade of the polyesters. So when they're actually getting films made, they get to pick the grade of materials and polyesters and everything. So lower grade materials equal more haze. Higher grade materials equal more clarity. So eventually you'll probably see that balance out more as time goes on. But it's, it's always such a hard um, back and forth where the, the biggest question is how long are any of those films actually going to last and that you don't really ever know until you put that on your car and you let it sit there for a handful of years so I'm honestly never going to take that chance again but I know lots of other people will speak on certain films and maybe eventually we'll have a good way to try and test films faster to see for that type of stuff. But the other thing you got to consider too is like just finding the best budget economical high grade film to install is like you're nickel and diming your film costs to the point where really what you should just do is focus on running your business rather than try and save a little money. You can always save, you can only save so much money, but you can always make more money. I have too many towels in my hand right now. Why does somebody keep asking how old Jack is? It's not even, it's just stop asking. It's a weird question. He's younger. Leave him be. <laughs> All right. Looking good. Very good. We got one spot there to take care of. That one's big. Let me get this one. Yes, I'm a little scared of buying his film, but it sticks fast, dries fast. <laughs> I wouldn't install films that I'm scared to install, personally. But hey, if it works for you.
I had that happen. All right, there we go. Battery check. Oh shit, it's probably gonna die. Um, but we're really close to the end, so if it does, if it dies, it dies. I may sound like a broken record. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember the Gila video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bought a, the cheapest Chinese film that I could find before and I got it to fade inside of two weeks too. Like, inexpensive dyed films, they just, they can fade fast. Um, the sun, like, go put something that's not, like a t-shirt, like literally leave a t-shirt outside over the course of like half a summer and then flip it over and you will just see how fast the sun can fade the dyes in a t-shirt. It's just cheap, cheap dyes and stuff that's not made to be UV resistant will fade pretty quickly. So your film sitting on the glass is getting an extreme amount of abuse every day. Like if you're out in the sun, how fast are you gonna sunburn? Like it's literally your car all, all year long, every year. It's always getting sun exposure. So the nicer thing about carbon and ceramic is when they're made with no dyes, the carbon isn't supposed to be able to fade because it's carbon, it's an element. But there's other things that can then fail too. The glue and the polyester. All my t-shirts fade. Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between a clay bar and a tack cloth? So a clay bar, um, you can wet it down and wash it out. I'm actually not sure if you can do that with a tack cloth, but I knew, uh, I, Rick actually, he would use tack cloths. He liked using those. I like a clay bar because it's like a wet version of a tack cloth, honestly. You're already spraying the windows and stuff, and so that's like, when you use a clay bar, you spray some sort of lubricant on like the paint and use that. So you already are spraying the window. So then you can, it's just a natural thing to add to what you're doing. That's nice. This car took you less, yet longer than yesterday's car. I didn't do a windshield on yesterday's car. So it should. Nice, this looks good. I'd say it's pretty A-OK. -okay. 180 on carbon is not a lot if it lasted you five years. What? I do carbon for like 350 and up anyways. Oh, you're talking about roll prices? going down some weird paths right now. Yep, you can use a, use a quick detailer with a clay bar. 
It's not quite what we're doing. <laughs> so clay bars for the most part have been used for paint and they do make synthetic clay bars for glass. That's what a glass aid clay bar is. It's just works better for glass. I've been a fan. And yeah, putting the uh, the tint on the on the tray over here. If it is right now. I don't know if it is. Yes, it is. So um, trying to find a spot to stick your clay bar to has been kind of irritating. Wrap it up in a piece of tint or liner. Um, and then when you come back to it, it should you should be able to just pick it up. So and then when it starts to look like this, run it under warm water and uh, you can massage um, all the chunky bits and stuff out of it. The McGuire's clay bars don't break down and stick to everything though. Oh, well that's cool. I haven't tried them. Um, I've tried a lot of glass clay bars and they were all kind of the same. There's ones that are recommended for glass and ones that are recommended for, for paint and stuff. One reason I really liked these was they're um, harder and some clay bars, when you put it on hot, hotter or warm glass, it'll leave clay marks behind. So trying to find that nice balance between having it moldable, still holding together without just, you know, smushing through it as you're using it on a warm surface. They worked out pretty well. But yeah, they do tend to stick to a lot of stuff. They'll just like, you know, it's a clay bar. It'll sit there in warm weather and start to melt but it doesn't get bad, it just melts down a little bit. Uh, I just joined for that back glass. When you're, hang, when you're hand cutting, do you cut the pattern from the inside or the outside? Um, honestly, now I just cut on the inside, but this one doesn't have a tonneau cover. So it'd be pretty easy to put a light up, shine it through, and then cut it on the outside. Um, I had to move over to cutting um, back windows out on the inside because most trucks that came in had tonneau covers. You can fold them up, but they still get in the way. You know, they'll roll up, and then that roll will like, sit all the way up here, or the foldy ones will keep you sitting back all the way here. It's just, they're all annoying. So I just... One day, uh, there was a guy I was working with. Um, they had like a cap over the back. And he was like, hmm, I wonder if this will work. And so what he literally did was he peeled an entire piece of tent, slapped it on the back window, cut out the whole thing, squeegeed it. And guess what? It looked great. And we are like, whoa, we can do that? And he's like, yeah, I guess so. Cool. And that's how we started doing them from then on. <laughs> I still do them that way if I hand cut. So even like the, the full size solid piece back windows, I'll peel the whole thing, like cut it to bulk size so it'll be overlapping the edges a little bit. Peel the whole thing, spray it, stick it in there, squeegee the whole thing out and then trim it. Works out pretty well. This looks good. Just making sure all the... Making sure everything looks looks good. That was pretty quick. Yeah, it went pretty nice.
I'm trying to focus a little bit more on efficiency. Like I said, you know, having a couple carts nearby with everything on them and trying to just stick to putting things back on the cart. Because this is how things normally get, right? I start putting things on top of each other. But if I know this is supposed to go over to the other side, oops, my bad. This goes on the other side. This goes here. Um, or on a, wow, how do I have, see, see what I mean? Now I got two, three, how'd I do that shit? I don't know, but this has to go, one has to go over on the other side, and I should honestly just toss that one away for now. So we'll take that to the other side, we'll put a dry shrink prep. These are extra rags, then I have this, this has a little mark on it, so this stays here. Cool, heat gun, that's here. Uh, my hard card, that goes in my belt. Dirty towels, that goes down here. So if I do make a mess of it, I'm hoping it'll just be that quick to clean up. And then this goes back over to the other side and then we can hang this up. Yeah, so what I've been trying to do is, um, oh God, I hate that, that's the worst. Latch it, you guys didn't remind me. That's why I don't latch things. Camera's all good. Windshield looks awesome. Nice. No check engine lights, nothing bad. Sweet, it's a Chevy, so that usually means everything's okay. What is Oh, that's what that is. You can see like a little hologram there in the mirror, but that's the reflection off that. <laughs> Interesting. Heads up displays too. I don't know how well you guys can see it, um, but this has a heads up display. So one of the questions I always get is, does tint impact a heads up display? No, it'll, it'll reflect just fine. Some of them used to put like a special insert in there. Maybe they just learned that, oh, hey, it'll just reflect off the glass. Let's put a brighter screen in it. But yeah, looks good. Cool. I can't see it. <laughs> Do you think that we'll do away with side mirrors and replace them with monitors? Um, that'd be super cool. I've seen Audi do that. Um, there was like a, there was a Korean TV show we were watching where they did that on. So on some high-end vehicles, they'll probably do it as a, uh, as a cool feature. They still might be required on some level to have actual mirrors there instead of replacing them with monitors. But yeah, on the high-end stuff, they'll probably do it. Or like you saw with, uh, with Honda, they had a little camera in the turn signal. So when you flip on your turn signal, some other cars do this too. When you flip on your turn signal, it'll show the camera on the dash so you can kind of view your blind spot um, on top of what you can see in the mirror. Oh yeah, it's locked now. This looks good. I'm very happy with it. Look at that. Is that dark? What percent? So factory privacy metered at 22. So what he wanted to do was 15 on the front and then just whatever I can do on the back to try and match that up as close as possible in ceramic. So we did 50% over the factory on the back and it's within a percent or two. And then 15 carbon on the front and 35 uh, ceramic on the windshield. Didn't Tesla use cameras instead of mirrors? Thought the government nixed it. Um, but I actually, I didn't hear that, but it sounds very, it's, it definitely sounds like something that would have happened. 
<laughs> the government isn't always smart. Cannon. Cannon. Look at that. Look at how much that slumped over at this point. Oof. So what's interesting, too, is this. Uh, so I thought it would be a good idea. It's actually kind of annoying. Um, this one has it, too. So on my Blazer, um, we've got a screen inside the rear view mirror. So that acts as, like, you know, you can see a little bit better out of that camera than you can out of the rear view mirror. But there's a couple things that get really annoying. One of them is uh, refresh rate. So they have to put a fast enough monitor in there to kind of keep up with traffic and everything. And it does a good job of that. It just looks lower quality, though. So the, the mirror visual looks better than the actual screen. So we drove around with it for a little bit, and honestly, we just leave it off. <laughs> it's cool. Sometimes we turn it back on. But the mirror just looks cleaner. But that's on a blazer, so it makes more sense uh, to have, you know, you can have a closer view because the camera's farther back on the vehicle than, than the actual mirror is, so you can turn it on or off. I like how they toggle the on or off, though. You just flip the actual mirror toggle at the bottom like they always do. It's a nice touch. How do you deal with installing windows that shift after rolling down a little bit? Make your pattern just a little bit bigger and don't worry about it too much. <laughs> Polly. I actually know that right. Daniel Rayner super chatted $9.99. Yo, yo, Matt, this is Rocky. Yo, yo, all you tint pollies out there. Yo, yo, what's up? Daniel Reyna with the 10. <laughs> Polly. Thanks for the 10, man. I appreciate it. Yo, yo, what's up? Rocky. All you Tim Pauly. I remember that. Pauly. <laughs> we watch those movies a ton. What now? Hello, Tint Studio. How can I help you? Yeah, what kind of vehicle? Okay, and what were you looking to get tinted? Did you want to do the full thing with the full windshield or front two? Yeah, it's the same case with the front doors too as well. Um, so we can still tint them. Uh, just usually the lighter you go, the safer you are, but you're still gonna see a lot of people with it. Um, but yeah, so all the all the side windows in the back glass. Okay, yeah, we could definitely do that. Yes, yes, for sure. So we have different shades in each one of the films that we carry. And then we have a couple different types of film that help manage the heat as well. Um, so starting on that vehicle would be 290 for all the sides in the back. Yes. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's shops that are going to charge different prices, um, just depending on quality of film and the time that it's going to take. So I'll spend probably about three hours on that vehicle. Um, I closed, uh, honestly, today by about like three or four. I'm all booked up for today. I, the earliest I could get you in would be Monday. No, no, I'm closed on Sunday. Well, I could do earlier on Tuesday, but um, I could get you in by, let's see, that one's probably going to take me 2.30. I could get you in by like 2.30, 3 o'clock on Monday. If not, 10 o'clock on Tuesday is the next earliest. Oh, gotcha. So we'd have to probably plan for a Saturday. Mm-hmm. Okay, no problem. Uh, no, the latest I take appointments is, is typically like 2.30, 3 o'clock. My name is Matt. All right, no problem. You have a good one. It's a 248 number, too. <laughs> They're not all good. What percent do you do on most windshields? 50. Yeah, actually 50. 35 is, is like, I go back and forth. I love the look of like 15 or 20 on the front doors, 35 on the windshield. I think it's probably my favorite like darkness look, but it stands out a lot too. So it depends on what you're going for. So 35, super comfortable to drive around with, blocks out a lot of glare. Um, like I said, it just stands out a lot more. Most people end up going with 50. It still adds a good amount of privacy. Um, but on a sunny day, you'll be able to see into the car. I've got a, I've actually got a good TikTok for this though. Yeah, let me show you guys this one. Um, yeah, this one right here. So this is a clear windshield on the right and a 50% windshield on the left. So you see how much natural like green there is? This is also on an overcast day. But see how much green there is? And then darker with the 50. 50, honestly, it almost seems darker than it actually is, but it reflects a lot from the sky. So it kind of gives you like a privacy illusion. It's really nice. I've come around to really appreciate 50. I used to think it was like super light, but it's actually not. It's interesting to see you actually stick with your hours and don't make exemptions, which is actually the right thing to do, which I don't. I mean, I respect staying later and, and hustling and stuff. Um, can't do that as much with family, though. So uh, everything that I do here is pretty much between, you know, like if we need to come in and set up for like a class or something, like if there was something special, we would do it. Um, or if there was like some sort of like super cool job opportunity or whatnot. But yeah, the, uh, as far as like the average thing goes, um, hanging around till like six, seven o'clock to ten a car, not not no more. Not, not with family. But yeah, what would happen a lot of times is I would go in uh, to 10 a day and there'd be like maybe an appointment in the morning and then nothing in the early afternoon. And then next thing you know, it's 3.30, 4 o'clock and then you got two people on the schedule and you're staying late. That drove me crazy. I would rather just start later in the day and work later than start early and hang out all day just to wait around for that. For an Altoids can. <laughs> Sean with the five for an Altoids can. Damn, you really want me to get an Altoid can. 
I guess next, I'll, at this point, I'll probably remember it. If I'm in a store and I see them, I'll get one. <laughs> Did you do a comparison video? Yeah, having like either the patience to film stuff like this, and then the, the problem is like the daylight shifts a lot, so unless you're shooting them at the same time in the day with the same conditions, things look really different. I wish I could have a few examples side by side. Um, so I'd have to like probably do the shades on my windshield, which actually would probably work out pretty well. I could do maybe like a clear windshield, a 50 and then a 35. See how that goes. Still not completely accurate, but yeah, that one day I had the blazer and I had that other one and it was a really nice comparison between the two. So I shot that TikTok really quick. It was nice. Um, hang on one sec. All righty, I'm gonna hop off here. Um, I'm gonna deliver this one because he's hanging out and I don't wanna make him wait any longer and my screen just went black. Why did it do that? Well, it's back now. Everything's gotta, gotta pop back up now. All right. My buddy, oh, this is a comment back a little bit ago. My buddy has a code scanner in his garage that I'm using, and I tell you why that came in clutch with a hybrid that somehow killed the battery, but it cleared it and it was fine. I don't know how to use a code reader for that, so I called my other buddy. Nice. Yeah, I should have a code reader for stuff like that. I talked about it before, but then I got confused at all the options. All righty, so we're going to shout out a few super dupers. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Thank you guys for hanging out today. Um, big shout outs to Sean and Daniel Reyna. And oh, oh yeah, and Brandon and Ken. Thank you guys so much. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you for supporting the stream. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna deliver this one. Everybody wants to. No, I'm just gonna end it. <laughs> I don't. I don't like to necessarily put uh, people on the spot like that. Yeah, it's super cool. I like what they did with this. Looks really, really nice. Alrighty, guys. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye. Probably be back. Maybe Monday. No. Mm, Tuesday. I don't know if I'm gonna stream the Monday one. I think I just gotta focus on it. It's gonna be annoying. Or it's it, it's gonna be more work. So...